Hello and welcome to your weekly roundup of all the latest news and ramble about the world of electric cars from the team at electrifying.com. So this week we will be discussing electric trucks, some big price cuts and the VW ID Buzz. Plus we'll be answering your electric car questions, discussing Tom's bargains of the week and dipping into the post bag to find out your views on everything electric. Welcome to the Kilowatt Half Hour. I'm Nicola. I'm Tom. And I'm Mike. Fabulous. How are we, team? Good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. I know that I know that you're good, Tom, because I saw you yesterday. Because we <laughs> me and Tom had like the best day of our entire lives yesterday. It was and very we, hard work. Very yeah. hard work. Thanks for the we were, we were saying as well, at the end of the day, we were like, I can't wait to discuss this on the podcast tomorrow. If anything, <laughs> we're just not gonna let Mike speak because we've got so much to talk about. <laughs> Sit back and relax, Mike, please. Wake me up <laughs> when you're finished. <laughs> Come on so then. Yesterday, what was it like? Right. Yesterday, me and Tom were truckers, like full blown truckers. We drove not just not just bin lorry trucks or like a sort of big delivery truck, but we drove a full, massive articulated lorry with trailer on the back and everything fully electric around actual roads. Well, they, well, kind of actual roads. It's like a test track. It's a place called Millbrook, um, which if you're not a car person, you've probably never heard of it before, but I guarantee you've seen it in TV shows and things like that. But it's a fully private test track that has real roads, real hilly roads and like uh, mile straights and things that you can test thing out. So we did like we actually did full electric truck driving. Yes, it was amazing. How are you feeling, it was. Tom? Yeah, it was great. I mean, the, the weird thing was you get in these things and you look at the controls, but for, for the the ones that have a, a fixed, they're not articulated, I think we both got the hang of it quite quickly, didn't it? Yeah. And they have rear steering axles and things, so it's not too difficult, really. You're just obviously very high up and all that sort of thing. The articulated lorry is, it, you have to completely change the way you drive and the way you think about things. We were on a private chess track, so there was no one to kill. But you know, out on the open road, uh, it, oh, God, I, I need another day or probably a week to try reversing because I really wanted to try that because yeah, I just let... about got the hang of, of doing things like go around. Yeah, they actually said, no, you're not allowed to do that, <laughs> uh, like going around roundabouts and things. And the thing was, after we left uh, in our cars, I found myself <laughs> taking this really weird line yeah. around corners yeah. for about 10 minutes. The people behind us are thinking, what, what's he doing? Why, why is he going on that side of the road? I'm like, oh, I don't have to anymore. It's such um, a weird sensation. I mean, it it, it gave me a new found respect for, mm. for lorry drivers, which I've always had a respect for them anyway, because those vehicles are, are ridiculous that they drive. But you, you're always fully aware that they have to take the corner slightly different because of this super long trailer. But it's further than you think it is. And then mm. you're having to think right I'm turning right I kind of have to go left and keep going 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 and then I'm gonna turn right it's such a, a weird sensation but eventually I think we kind of got the hang of it but the mm. concentration that you need and also got them up to top speed which was 56 mile an hour which feels fast feels really fast which is weird because mm. when you're on the motorway and you see a lorry going 56, you get annoyed because they're going slow. But it's fast in those things when you've got to think about braking times and turning and reaction times and just the size of everything and the wind shaking the whole entire thing. It's such a weird and amazing sensation. So we have got to mm. say a massive thank you to Mercedes Trucks for, invite us, for inviting us along for the day because it was so much fun and there will be a video coming out very mm. soon there's so a video we'll which is know. full of interesting i mean they're electric trucks obviously that's why we went to go and drive them yeah. but there are lots of interesting things in there about how it works in terms of how long drivers are legally allowed to keep driving for before they have to stop and how fast you have to charge in that time in order to keep going for the next time they have to stop um which show you how it could work so the next generation of electric trucks will have 600 kilowatt hour batteries and will charge at one megawatt now if, if you think about cars now you know 100 kilowatt oh that's all right yeah and you know, oh, i've got 100 kilowatt hour battery oh that's big yeah 600 kilowatt hour and one terawatt yeah, yeah. so because the, the idea is is that a, a lorry driver legally can drive for four and a half hours and then they have to stop and have a 45 minute break and in those 45 minutes they need to be able to charge up the lorries from 
zero or whatever, 10%, up back up to 100 and off they go again. But at the moment, the infrastructure isn't quite there, but it's getting there. There's been like huge investments that's been put in that eventually in that 45 minute break where they can go and pop to the loo and have a sandwich or do whatever, that the whole thing can be charged up and, and off they go. And it should work. And I think it will work. I mean, especially yeah. when it comes to the bin lorries. Totally yeah. makes sense. Because you think a normal bin lorry is doing what? 40 miles at the most on a journey, just going around little streets. Doesn't need to go any further than that. And then you need the electrics to get everything moving in the back and stuff. And then you go back and then you charge of an evening. It's totally doable. We, and our, so much fun. Our council here in Weymouth tried out, had a trial of electric bin lorries. And um, people complained because um, one of the complaints was I normally – I can hear them. I can hear it coming, which is usually my clue to come to go and put the bins out. And of course, these things are silent; they just roll up. <laughs> we didn't think we would add our bins empty. I thought because well, usually they're they're, out, they're usually around a sort of half six, seven o'clock in our road, and it's usually you know one day a week you don't need an alarm, but this time it was completely silent. So we woke up thinking, oh, the bins haven't come. Of course, when we would check, they're empty. But they yeah, they they even had people com- people complain about anything, won't they? But uh, yeah, it, it was it was it was lovely. I, mean, last, I think they must have been on loan for a, a month to see if they like them or not so we've gone back to horrible old diesel ones now which i can yeah. hear three streets away but uh yeah it does stuff that doesn't do a huge mileage it doesn't need a top speed mm. and you can charge it up in the yard overnight it makes perfect sense doesn't it yeah yeah mm. and they know they know their journeys they know the exact trip that they're going to be doing they don't they don't need to go past 20 mile an hour most of the time they're stopping every what six houses something like yeah. that and yeah, if you miss the bins because you didn't hear them, <laughs> then you should have done it the night before, set an alarm on your phone or something. Ironically, be you, I'm afraid. <laughs> ironically, we have I have my, I have my milk delivered because I like to use the local um, dairy rather than a sort of supermarket. And um, they've switched to electric vehicles now for delivering the milk. And they had the cheek to sort of put anything, <laughs> saying, we're embracing the future. We're going to have electric vehicles to deliver your milk. And I was thinking, well, <laughs> if only someone had thought of been doing that a few years ago, you know, with electric vehicles and milk. It's like when I saw, there's a, a, some of you saw it on, um, on Facebook, there's a company that's deli- um, developed a, uh, like an electric sail on a boat, you know, and they said, this is going to be the first of its kind. You know, you think, well, pretty sure we've had sails on boats before i think that like was a, the original yes. i was gonna say just <laughs> like a sailboat exactly so nothing new There's nothing new if, under you, th- the if you think about if you think about milk deliveries mike it's a, a electric delivered by electric vehicle in a recyclable packaging yes and it's like a subscription it's like they're, they're, it just sounds so it's modern clever. doesn't it and it's it's been around since the what 50s exactly. oh it was... just makes me it reminds me of that um <laughs> that episode of go. father ted where he gets stuck on it that terrible episode of speed that they did where it got <laughs> yes. stuck on down he could get off he's yes. stuck at eight mile an hour <laughs> it, it goes blue. under eight mile an hour the whole thing will explode very good. <laughs> so talking about um, uh, commercial vehicles that aren't commercial vehicles, um, you've just done a video that's just gone live on the Electrifying YouTube channel. Um, one of my favourite cars, the ID Buzz. Makes no sense, but we all love it, don't we? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Did you enjoy your time with it? I really did. Do you know what? I had one back when it first came out. So, you know, you get them on like press loan. And I had one for a couple of weeks and I loved it you know, when I had it about a year and a half ago. And I think I love it even more now. Mm. And I can't I can't quite put my finger on exactly what it is. It's a charm, isn't it? There's totally yeah. a charm to it. I mean, it won't get you far. It's ridiculously expensive. There is no third row of seats, but it's huge and it's got so much character. I mean, yeah, so the video is, is now live so you can have a good look at it. But also, like on the video, like what we were saying, Mike, there's so many good deals mm. for a second-hand one if you want one. At the moment, if you go for like a single tone one, you can get one um, for like 12 grand of what the original price yeah, was. And early 40s. Now you don't they? have to wait yeah. a year and a half to get one. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that was the nuts thing, wasn't it? When it first came out, because I looked at one uh, before I bought the, the Ionic 5, because it was similar kind of to time. And the dealer delighted in telling me that it was going to be 18 months to two years before I'd get, um, I'd get, my, get my car. So I thought, well, I can't, I'm not really that invested in it. I'll, I'll let it go. Um, I, I get an email every week from that dealer now saying, we've got stock, we've got stock if you really want it. So I'm kind of thinking, well, no, because, you know, mm. we've got sent away with a flea in my ear uh, two years ago. But that, the, the, and, and, and it's not just the availability that's changed as well. It's, it's the cost as well. When I was looking at an, on a lease site before we started this, and it's under £300 for a business lease now for 
for two years. I say 5,000 miles, not a lot, but it's, if it just shows you that under 300 pounds, it was, it was almost double that when it first came out and you couldn't get one anyway. Yeah. So as you say, the market's changed completely and um, it, it, it makes no sense. As you say, if you look at all the figures for, for Buzz, it's, it's slow, it's heavy, it's inefficient, it's not, but it's, it's just one of those cars that um, it, just t- it, it just ticks a box in you, doesn't it? It just makes you think, oh, I enjoy driving. It's one of those cars you look back at when you parked it and walk, walk away from. Um, and I think there's, there's not that many in the world of yes. electric that kind of do that. Um, so I'm, I'm glad it exists. And everyone looks, everyone looks. And ev- any time I drive past one, I will turn around and have a good look. Yeah. It's just one of those, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I like So it. charming. Yeah. What have, you be t- what have you two been up to? Let's start with you, Tom. Go on then. Apart from trucks. Um, well, apart from uh, driving trucks, well, uh, I've been uh, looking through the, the deals as usual. And there have been, including the ID Buzz, some price cuts this week. So we've been used to these kind of deals where manufacturers are offering, you know, £5,000 deposit contribution, but now they've actually gone, all right, all right, okay, we'll just cut the price, which is kind of what we've been asking for all along, isn't it? Just make these these cars cheaper. Um, and the big one, I suppose, is the Vauxhall Mocha, where they've now done what they did with the Corsa and brought in like an entry-level version. And it is... Uh, drum roll. Drum roll, looking, looking up. Under uh, 29,495. Yeah. yeah, under 30 grand. So do you remember we were saying, oh, this is a £40,000 car. There's no yeah. way it's worth 40 grand. And of course, the depreciation after the first year was huge. And they were offering these big deposit contributions. And now they've just gone, all right, fess up. Let's just make a cheaper version. Mm. So uh, under 30 grand, that's looking good. Um Honda is the other one where we, I, I know in your original video, Nicola, you went, how much? Yeah, because it was 45. Yeah. Yeah. So they have now lopped off, uh, so we've gone five, down from uh, yeah, five grand, uh, five grand off, isn't it? So they've, they've lopped five grand off it. So okay. you now that suddenly looks more reasonable, doesn't it? I mean, those were in my deals of the week a couple of weeks ago, £249 deposit and £249 a month on PCP. I don't think they're going to be that cheap again. I think that was a one-off deal. And this lower list price doesn't make the monthlies any more attractive because they're, they've they taken down their deposit contribution to account for this um, uh, list price drop. But it's still a nice thing. This is now in a different band. It's no longer up against a Tesla Model Y in terms of its list price. Uh, and it makes it a more interesting car. It's where it should have been in the first place. Mm-hmm. It makes you wonder what they were thinking. Um, and the last one is a car which I know Mike hates, and I, <laughs> I don't hate, I don't hate any car. I, I have a, I have a. This, this makes you think. So the MX, Mazda MX thirty. Oh right, yeah, you do hate that car, Mike. I don't. I don't hate any <laughs> car. So, uh, I don't know where this has come from. Does, doesn't <laughs> doesn't charge very quickly. The range isn't great, but I kind of see some people who might go. I want a small SUV. I like being up high. I don't drive that far. I like the way it looks. I like the way it drives. But it was yeah. always a little bit pricey. Yeah. Now, the thing is, it's now gone down. So it's uh, now, uh, he says, looking at his notes, uh, 27995 okay, which is right, pretty cheap yeah, yeah. For, the, for the entry-level version. But here's the trick. It's also got 0% finance mm. and a £6,000 deposit contribution. So... If you went in and paid twenty seven nine nine five, you'd be nuts because you can just put it on a zero percent um, uh, PCP, and then they give you another six grand off. Right. Now it's a four year deal, and you have to put down a deposit of uh, of about four yeah four six seven seven, and then at the end of it, the, the balloon payment, so the money you have to buy, uh, pay if you want to buy the car and keep the car, is only seven thousand six hundred quid. So that's what they think the car's going to be worth after four years, which is telling in itself. But if you do the sums, it means that that car will have cost you, if you paid that balloon at the end, 21995 Huh. So you could buy a Mazda MX-30 for 21995 and you don't have to pay more than £199 a month. I think Hello. the question is, would yeah. Mike want to have one for four years? <laughs> Would anyone want to have? But also, what with? would you have? <laughs> what would you have for twenty one nine nine five? Brand new electric yeah. car. Not what not else really. is there? 
Uh, I mean, that's that, that's the same as people are talking about those, the, the Citroen. Uh, yeah. You know, the EC3. That's going to be 22 grand. The uh, the new Volkswagen ID2, 22 grand people are talking about. Yeah. And this is a 22,000 pound electric car now. And it's not that bad hey hang on you got short memory i remember you texting me from a a bp pulse recharging thing and it was charging at something like 12 kilowatts and you were late nine, for the shoot you were late for the shoot it yeah. hadn't charged the night before because yes. something had gone wrong uh it wasn't your favorite car then i don't seem to remember so uh, i like the cork cork's nice in it but um yeah listen i don't hate it I, I wouldn't choose one um but you know every pan has a lid doesn't it so i mean there'll be people who do like it so yeah uh, we, it's, it's the same as the buzz you know you if you like know. if you like the look of it you go for it and at that price you know oh there's way more the, love for the buzz than there is for the master <laughs> i'm not saying it's the same i'm going to say same principle in so much as it's, it's <laughs> okay, you know fine. there we people are looking at it think, <laughs> okay, yeah fine. okay mm. i like that and and, and it's like there's one uh, <laughs> going around here, here in weymouth weymouth has uh, two car dealerships basically it has a Vauxhall dealership and a master dealership and i think there are people oh. who you know and it comes up in our post bag every week I won't travel. If the dealership isn't nearby, I won't. I'm not interested. I'll, I, I struggle to understand that mm. because, you know, my Hyundai dealership's kind of a good 45 minutes away. And I've been, I'll have been there once in two years when I get it serviced next, next month. And it's a courtesy car anyway. So it's not, it's no big shakes. But I know, you know, I've had a neighbor who I helped get a car. Um, and they said it's got to be a local dealership for the servicing and everything. I don't know what the everything is. Um, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't countenance going to Dorchester, which is about, um, six miles away because that's too far away to have your car service. So, yeah. And I think that maybe the Mazda was that, maybe it was just someone walking past and thinking, I like the look of it. They do a lovely red, don't they? Mazda metallic red's beautiful. They do. Soul yeah. red. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. really nice. Um, so yeah, maybe it's that, you know, people like a familiarity of, you know, local stuff. So maybe it's that, but, um, I think we should move on for the MX-30. Maybe. Uh, talking of that, and, and sorry if I'm uh, uh, delving into your post bag, Mike, you know, uh, before time, but there was a comment from somebody who has a Genesis. Uh, did, did you yes. see that one? I did. It's a question for Nicola then, isn't it? Really? <laughs> that, well, yeah, but that they, you know, Genesis, that the whole question? thing Yeah, was, go on, hit me. Go on. Well, but it's that you don't, the idea was that you don't have dealers. You don't need dealers because yeah. you've got a concierge who, if you had a puncture, would come and take your car away and fix the puncture. Or if there's a problem, they do that servicing, they come and take it away. Now, of course, Genesis have moved to this dealer model using Hyundai dealers. So yeah. these people are used to having this concierge when they've got a yeah. puncture. And now, like, phone through to their local Hyundai dealer where they have to sit with all the people having you know, the brake pads like done on their own. Like yeah, Sorry, are, we, are these people like, being so fabulous because they've got so used to their luxurious lifestyle well i think that was partly what but the car was sold on wasn't it concierge yeah. or nothing you get the concierge you well, know they come and as you say they come and fix your tires they arrange get your theater yeah. tickets to the front row and all this kind of concierge sort of thing um but now that's that's kind of slightly gone out of the window but you didn't experience any of this did yours did you well, no, because I, I, I mean, I had it for six months. I didn't have any issues with mine. So it didn't have to, I didn't have the concierge enjoyment. No. But but you, can I you mean, imagine being a, a, you a year, aren't you? <laughs> can you imagine being a Bentley buyer and being used to a, like a Bentley dealer and all that, ni- <laughs> all that nice thing and people talking nicely to you and then say, oh, no, Bentleys, are, they're, now, uh, they're now in Volkswagen dealers. So uh, you have to go, go and sit there with, with those people who'd be like, ooh, ooh. Oh, I'm yeah, sure it's like. This. this is what I signed up for. Like, sorry, I, I normally shop at Waitrose. I don't know what's going on here. Why, why am I in a little? <laughs> Come on, then, Mike. What you got? Uh, well, I've I've been I've been sort of monitoring the uh, the international stories, and um, I, I'm sort of watching with horror with the death throes of Fisker. Um, you know, I'm the one that's sitting by the oh, bed yeah. watching the uh, the life support machine beeping, and they're wondering where it's ever going to stop beeping because I've had. I've had a wretched time, haven't they? Which, you know, you could say is largely of their own making. But um, yeah, some more stories that come out in the last few days. Um, they, lo- they lost track of a load of orders and a load of, a load of money internally, apparently, that uh, they had cars delivered and, you know, people saying, well, I haven't paid for it yet. And, and them saying, well, yeah, th- we think you have. And so there's been, <laughs> there was that. They've lost, um, they had 70,000 uh, reservations uh, initially, but because since since the kind of, and the problems, 40,000 people have cancelled their reservations. Ooh. They've got they've got a ton of stock in the States that they can't shift, even at, you know, 39% off. 
I've been delisted on the on the stock exchange because the share value had reached zero. It doesn't look oh, good, no. does it? I mean, I mean, I, I kind of no. every every sort of night, I kind of you know with trepidation type Fisker into the new search in Google, and, and it comes up with you know various horror stories. But they seem to be hanging on. Um, I don't know if there'll be a future whether there's anything to buy as a company. Um, it's a shame. Save them. It is. It is a in shame. Theory. Yeah, in theory, it it looked like it was going to work, and and like the the whole California mode and putting down the windows and because I remember I sat inside a Fisker Ocean and I was like, this is really impressive. It's very nice. Everything's all very sustainable. Nice recycled materials. Um, I didn't get to drive one. I just got to sit in one, uh, and saw the California mode. And from the outside, I was like, well, this is like an electric Range Rover Evoque, basically. Mm. Really yeah. nice from the outside. Nice on the inside. I just assumed. That it would have been a success. Now look, it's difficult. Making cars mm-hmm. is difficult. You know, I think that's the bottom line with this. And yeah. I think it won't. If it does fail, it won't be the first kind of electric car startup to do so, which is a, which is a shame. But, uh, but there we go. Mm. On a slightly more positive note, we've just had um, sales figures through from March for the UK, and rosy enough, forty eight thousand three hundred eighty eight um, pure battery electric vehicles registered, which is a three point eight percent. Uh, rise, which is good. Uh, market shares fifteen point two percent, which is that's pretty much stable now. Um, you know whether or not we're going to need some kind of incentive to to push that on, but it's kind of been slightly static for the last two or three months. Yeah. Uh, Tesla Model Y was the ninth um, best selling car in March. Um, so yeah, it's you know it's positive. It's not exactly um, incredible, and I don't think it's quite the trajectory that people saw electric car adoption mm. growing so um so what do you think how do you, how do you think they're going to um those figures will improve well i, I mean it's still mainly business yeah businesses buying it isn't it because whether it's through salary sacrifice or uh it's a company cars because the incentives are, are so great the car makers have to make electric cars more attractive to private customers because they've got to get to this 22 percent level otherwise they get fine for the petrol cars they sell. So I think we're going to see increasing deals for private customers um, and that will incentivize people to go out and buy them, I suspect. But uh, there's still a lot of disinformation out there, isn't there? I mean, mm. all the people who still think that the battery's going to collapse. or that, oh. uh, And in fact, that the the what has collapsed is the second-hand value. So as we've seen, the, the, the year-old cars are, are cheap now and that doesn't help finance and... Yeah, you know, there's something that needs to get out of that spiral and uh, and make them more attractive. I think uh, the spiral is largely um, probably helped by social media. I'm thinking of the post that we did last week, Tom, on mm. on the electrifying Instagram channel. Posted a reel because we both did a long road trip up to Sunderland to go to the Nissan factory, which is really cool, by the way. Um, video coming out soon. Um, and uh, so we had a little look and then we were talking about charging and because it's like a 700 mile round trip. So we had to use public chargers and we stopped at a, a charger and one of us was charging at one speed. Another was charging at another. And it was a little, oh, mine's charging faster. Ha ha ha. No, mine's charging faster. Ha ha ha. Simple video. Simple yeah. video. And clearly the Instagram algorithm got hold of it. And, um, well, along came a lot of angry anti-EV people that are just going nuts on the comments and I, it's just constant i've had to turn off my notifications because it's just getting really irritating and i'm getting angry with people they're just going well i fill up my car in five minutes full of petrol and then i'm fine and you're like well yeah no I, i'm aware of that that's fine good yes. for you that's lovely by the way how much is that petrol costing you because that's great because normally when i'm at home i plug in at home we're just doing a 700 mile round trip that's why we're charging publicly you know and it's just the, the anger and the oh. amount of comments that come in. And then it, and then everyone just feeds off each other. And then before you know it, so many more people become anti-EV, which is just really frustrating. So I think it's, yeah, the whole charging infrastructure, all that sort of stuff just needs more positivity around it. Yeah. And eventually mm-hmm. those numbers should go up. Yeah. No, that trip, by the way, I mean, we did have to charge and we did have to stop and have a wee and whatever to yeah. do that so it's slightly more inconvenient than uh our video man manos who went up in his diesel and he was all ha ha i don't have to stop but it wasn't a big deal like it used to be was it i mean there wasn't that whole you know planning that you had to do of all oh, the charge is going to be working and when i get there and that sort of there was none of it i just stopped and charged we got a and, coffee yeah 
And Caught it was so much emails. easier these days. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, we're going to, I'm going to ask, we've got a, a few readers questions, part of the post bag as ever. It's not specifically a car buying one today, more of a car selling one, to be honest with you, but I'm going to read it out to you, see what, see what the team make of it. Um, uh, Mev 22 from YouTube, um, says my husband, um, has six months left of his PCP. Unfortunately, his car, Zoe is in negative equity. Um, so we'll have no value to trade in for the next PCP contract. Um, he's now able to pay off the contract and walk away for no extra cost. But in your experience, in your experience, will dealerships offer more than the car is worth at the PCP to get your custom or is it worth waiting the six months or shall we pay it off now and just buy a used BEV? We feel so ripped off by PCP, we pay all that money and nothing to show for it at the end of the contract. Tom, what do you reckon? Well, that was the whole point of the video of uh, the free car, uh, mm. the mocker, which was that you know you have a PCP and they come and take the car away at the end or you have to pay for it, which is the same with leasing, which somehow messes with my mind, but I'm very old fashioned about things like that. Yeah. I'd much rather pay off and then have something at the end of it. Uh, for PCPs, though, I can see the attraction. I can see it with leasing as well. You say, oh, well, rather than have to spend all this money on car repairs, I can just pay 200 quid a month and I get a new car. Very yeah. nice. In this case, yeah, the, the PCPs rely on the value of the car being predicted in the future. So the, the finance companies are taking a bet on it. They're thinking, we've looked at our crystal ball and this car is going to be worth this after three years. In this case... They've obviously got it wrong, and they've overvalued what the car's going to be worth. So, obviously, you'd be nuts to pay that off for yeah. when you could like just go and buy it exactly the same car for two thousand pounds less. Um, so you can hand the car back, walk away, and just go and buy another car or lease another car. What the car dealers hope you will do is just go straight into another PCP. Mm. Uh, in this case, that's going to be a bit sticky because they haven't got a deposit, so you'd mm. be expected to come up with one or pay a more monthly fee. They do have incentives to keep people in the finance company. I think it, it's a company called RCI in the, yeah. the case of Renault. So they will get the dealer will try and get you into another deal, and they may find something to keep you on that finance hook. But otherwise, if they can't talk to them, see say this is what the, the deal is, uh, what do you reckon? And they might just walk away. It happened to somebody I know with a Nissan Leaf. Uh, they just walked away and went to another dealer who did them a better deal. So uh, I don't know. I think I'd I'd go and buy a second-hand one and finance it in some other way if I were them because you get to keep the car at the end. But yeah. my mindset is different to other people's. Because the term negative equity is scary, isn't it? Because people think if it comes to the end of a, yeah. a period and you think, well, am I going to owe more money than I've paid? I mean, it basically just means, as you say, it's it's the finance company that take the hit on that, the, the difference between mm. the, the – the, I mean, they use the word guaranteed future value, which is a bit misleading, isn't it? Because that just means that you're not going to owe anything because mm. that's what they'll buy. But it doesn't mean that's the value of the car that you're going to have to – yeah, you might think the balloon payment is guaranteed when it's not, is it? It's actually just the value of the car. So if, if it's mm. way below that, then – you, you'd be mad to pay the balloon payment because it's more far more than the car's worth. So I guess, yeah, I think that in, in this case, the car will just go back. Um, but as, as you said, you might, for that, you might as well have leased it, which have been cheaper monthly costs. And it was just, you're basically renting the car, aren't you? And it's going to, it's going to go back. So do you think we're going to see more of this with mm. the, uh, with the realignment of uh, used values, putting it optimistically? Yeah, I, th I think we will. I think that uh, people are used to having a bit of equity in their car when they go back for a PCP, and that's the way the dealers keep them in the same brand, and you just get a, a new car every three years uh, with the same sort of payment. But yeah. now, because uh, used car values have gone down, uh, especially electric used car values, there is going to be a, a lot more of this, I think. So if you get to the end of your PCP and you think, should I pay the balloon? Should I go into something else? Just have a look at what the value of very similar cars is on well, our used car site, obviously, on electrifying.com would be a good place to look mm. um, and just see what that's so you can say to the dealer, well, I'm not paying that. Um, and maybe they'll do you a, a deal to buy the car. Uh, I, I think that's the way I'll go and I'll finance it again based on its current value. Yeah. Nice. I, I have no input in this whatsoever, apart from just I'm gutted for them. Uh, yeah. Everything's yeah. all come from you and you and Tom there, Mike. But um, yeah, that's so, that's so frustrating. So frustrating, especially with a Zoe as well, because we all love the Zoe. But what can you do? There you go. 
you want to know some other postbag things? Yeah, go on. Yes, We've only got a few minutes left. We've been well, chatting already. on. Exactly. Well, I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, a bumper postbag. Thank you so much. If you listen to this on on a podcast app and you're wondering what we're talking about, there is a comment section below the YouTube version of this um, podcast. So um, if you feel the need, please um, put any car buying questions or comments uh, in, into the YouTube channel comments bit. Tom's leaf. T- Tom's been the subject of most of the comments this week, I have to say. <laughs> And it's Tom's more, show. his noisy leaf. Uh, Tom Tom has Tom has a leaf um, that is making a funny noise. He thinks it's, it's like you've been followed by a motorbike. Is that right, Tom? It does. It does sound like. Um, uh, I think one of the comments was about somebody who said that they used to put a playing card in their rally chopper spoke yes. to make it sound like a motorbike. Oh, it sounds that. like that. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like. I still that. love doing that. <laughs> Obviously, not nice on a car, but on a bike. No. Yeah. No. Uh, well, um, he's got a couple of suggestions. Hugh Robinson says uh, it might be tyre related, Tom. He had a tyre casing that had gone inside the tyre, which made the tyre slightly oval and only made a noise above 30 miles an hour. It could be worth having the tyre checked, particularly if you've hit a pothole. As we know, your roads strewn, your local area is strewn with potholes. We know that, Tom, from previous yeah. uh, messages. Yeah. Um, and a dewarmk, it's the name I've been given. Um, Tom, ha- um, ha- I'll have a guess, an electric rotor bearings within the motor itself, but I really hope it's not. I guess you probably hope it's not because that sounds expensive. Well, I hope it's not as well. Yeah, I, I don't think it's motor related because it's difficult on an electric car because you can't tell if it's engine related because the, you don't change gear and hear if it goes up and down. Yep. Um, but what I did do is find a long hill and put it in neutral. Ah. And it was still there then oh, when, okay. the rotor, ah. when the motor wasn't turning. So it's it, it's road related rather than Potentially motor Potentially tyre then. Is it certain speeds? Well, yeah. It, it, well, it just goes up with the road speed. So I think above sort of 30 miles an hour. It, it starts and then it's related. So it's just like, if you're on the motorway, it sounds like there's a motorbike behind you the whole time. What I think I'm going to do mm. when I get a moment is I bought a spare wheel because of the um, the catastrophic potholes around here. And of course, there's no spare wheel in the back of the car. It's just a can of foam. So I bought from a scrap leaf another wheel. So I'm going to try that on the back wheels and see, see if it goes away. And then I've got my answer. Okay. Well, uh, well, keep us posted. Right, and then the second thing cheaper was... Cheaper than a motor. It's cheaper than a motor. Yeah, that would be way cheaper than replacing the motor. Uh, Tom, you complained last week there was no way of getting receipts for your electric car charging, mm-hmm. which Ben, our finance director, yes. is very pleased about because it means you can't put any expenses in. Um, Adrian up north... <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a plan, isn't it? Adrian up north says, you need a Electroverse card, mm-hmm. Tom. Octopus Electroverse. Have you got one? I've got one. I have actually, yeah. Okay, there's no cost of no, monthly subscription. You shouldn't have to have one to be able I, to get a listen, receipt. I know, I know, I know. This is this is a workaround, Nicola. It's a workaround. Um, you get subs- oh, you get receipts so. via the app um, if you use the Electroverse, which I didn't know. So apparently that's the case. Uh, I used it. But on if a, you don't have Electroverse, yeah, well, I'm just giving you a solution to this particular problem, Nicola. And just you know. <laughs> Well, we what need I to... tend to do, just in case you were wondering, we is are. I just I go on my banking app and I and I screen grab the amount of payment that's come out of my bank on that. And Ben, and ben pays you on that, does he? Do. Okay, There's no receipt. We'll to... Okay, fine. <laughs> no, I don't actually yeah, charge expenses. Good intel. Uh, well, Adrian, I sort of says he used this. Yeah. A more spe- the more impressive part of this um, uh, comment from Adrian was that he used it on a 600 mile trip in his say at me electric which i think is pretty impressive and it works almost everywhere but not charge point so scotland adorable. scott mm. so tom if you're going to scotland you have to think of a different plan so i've got hundreds of other comments especially about insurance and all kinds of things but we're way over aren't we so we're probably gonna have to draw a line under it otherwise mm. you know we'll be going on forever so yes i guess that otherwise. concludes the post bag yeah. nicola well done, team. Well, it's been a lovely chat. What what are we up to for the for the rest of the week? Because today, as we are recording, is Thursday. So anything to look forward to that I think we can discuss next week, maybe? I don't think I have. No, I'm just going thinking as a tease, doing... like for next week's show, you know? No, well, I'm going to swap the i5 for the Lexus because uh, I've well, Ginny and I swapped for a while. Okay. And uh, uh, we're going to swap back because she's got a long journey planned. And... I'm quite pleased in some ways because it's too fast. That's I'm going to get myself complaint. in trouble. I'm going to get myself in trouble. You just, <laughs> it, it's its too quick. I, I'd, I'd like a slower car, please. Okay. Thank you. That's Can fine. Mike? Um, no, I've got a Volvo um, XC40 recharge, which is going to be 
called the EX40 recharge, isn't it? But it's still called the old name. And I've got that's coming in next week. So I've not driven once. And since it changed from front wheel drive to rear wheel drive, so I'm being intrigued to know what that's yeah. like. So I shall report on the next oh, podcast. Nice. You? Yeah. I've and just I remembered can... I, I I've just remembered I've got a car coming too. <laughs> oh, okay. What's that? I've got an Aura Zero Three. Have you? When's that coming? <laughs> it's coming in the, on uh, uh, Monday. Oh, how long have you got no, that for? A week. So it's um it's the one with the bigger battery, which is why I'm trying it. But also, those deals are looking quite tempting. Oh. Yeah, it could be the could be the leaf replacement, couldn't it? Yes, it could be the leaf replacement. Yeah, because you seem quite pleased and quite intrigued by it at the same time there, Tom. Well, I am. It's a long time since I've driven one, and I thought it was a okay car. Yeah. But uh, as we were talking about before, okay cars suddenly become quite attractive cars when they're 160 quid a month. Yeah. So um, we'll yeah. see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can tell you about how I've swapped. The, my Genesis GV60 is gone. I'm now in a BYD Dolphin, but I've had a bit of drama to start with, but it's oh, totally yeah. fine. Everything's all going to be swapped over tomorrow and I can fill you in next week. How's that for a little tease? That's great. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next week. Don't forget to put comments and everything in the section below. And if you are listening in all the usual podcast places, we appreciate it. If you give us a nice little five star rating and just, yeah, because the ratings are really good for us with the algorithm. So if you want us to do well, which you definitely do, (laughs) then help us out. That would be really handy. Thanks, team. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.